In my opinion, there are really two main differences if you compare the more traditional machine learning engineer and the new age machine learning engineer who's working with generative AI. So the other day I was watching the Pinecone AI Transformation Summit and in there I heard this notion of the new age machine learning engineer and this was a new term to me but it resonated really well with me based on the projects that I've been working on over the past couple of months. So in this video I want to quickly like highlight what in my opinion this notion of a new age machine learning engineer is like what kind of skills do you need how is it different from a traditional machine learning engineer and what kind of projects do you work on and overall how do you add value to a business so for those of you that are new here my name is dave ebelaar and i'm the founder of data lumina which is a data intelligence coaching and consulting business and what i've really noticed in this this shift basically from Traditionally doing more data science work, so the classical, classical machine learning projects. In my opinion, there are really two main differences if you compare the more traditional machine learning engineer and the new age machine learning engineer who's working with generative AI. And the first point is that you need more software engineering skills. I've been trained as a, as a data scientist. And as I was taking on these generative AI projects, what I've really found is this, this difference of the more in the more classical machine learning approach, you have these, these algorithms and you train them with your own data or company data to make them specific to solve, to solve a problem. And then you try to find the best algorithm, you try to find the best data, and that is how you build your machine learning solution. But now, since we now have these, these generative AI models that are pre-trained, what we do is we interact with them via various APIs. And since the main way right now that we, we built these, these applications is we, we use a process of retrieval augmented generation where we use vector databases to store our data and then do a retrieval and then pass that as like an input to, to the large language model. And if you want to learn more about that, then I highly recommend checking out my, my previous video. But that is the overall main process. So without going into much of the technical details, what this basically means in simple terms if, is that you have to connect a lot of services together. So for example, you have your vector database, you have your large language model API. And to, to get to an answer, you have to first get a query from, from the user, then pass it on to the vector database, retrieve it, send it to the language model, then you get back your answer, and then you maybe want to store that somewhere, and you're essentially just building out a whole application with, with, with various moving data parts that each do their own thing. And maybe in between you wanna build some custom logic, so you add some, some custom functions. It's, it's more focused on actually building applications than it is really on training and tuning machine learning models and, and, and algorithms. That's where this, this notion of, of like, like software development and, and the skills required for that like really, really come from. And I, where I really had to brush up on a lot of areas. So for example, um, I've, I've mainly used Python as my main programming language. I still do, um, but I had to like brush up on how to, uh, for example, build quick web applications using Flask to um, make these, these endpoints available for applications. So that is like one of the main thing. And also just in general, like working, working with APIs and how you connect all of that and, and working with the vector databases and, and streamlining that, putting in various checks in place, all stuff that you see in a typical software engineering project. I feel like the new age machine learning engineer leans more towards software engineering, but you need the mindset of a data scientist. And why is that? And that, I think, brings us to point number two. You have to learn how to work with these pre-trained language models, the pre-trained large language models that are out of the box already very capable, but not use, space, use case specific. If you want to solve very specific business problems with these models, you have to make them specific. How do you do that? You add context, you add data through the process of retrieval augmented generation, for example. But now here's the difference with software engineering. So as a software engineer, you are, are mainly trained to, to work on applications that are deterministic. 
most of the time. So what does this mean? For example, when you create an API, you send a certain kind of request and you expect a certain output or you expect an action that is predictable, meaning you can repeat it. You can repeat those experiments and you can put in tests in place. But now these pre-trade large language models, they are non-deterministic. You never know exactly what it is that you're going to get as a result. Now you can play of course with the temperature, setting that even to zero to make the models less creative, but your outputs are also dependent on the user input. And for example, like one of the most common use cases right now for generative AIs is building like internal data or enterprise data chatbots. So these are chatbots that companies use internally to ask questions about their own data. Person A might ask a question one way and then colleague person B might ask a question in a slightly different way where they essentially want to retrieve the same information, those, both those queries can be interpreted and processed through the whole Gen AI applications in two different ways. Meaning that person one will maybe retrieve some, some part of the documentation from your vector database and the Gen, the Gen AI app will base its answers on that, whereas the other person might, just based on the wording, extract a different piece of data from the factor database and thus gets a different uh, different output. Now, where I was going with this, as a software engineer, you're not really used to these kind of applications because they're unpredictable. But, and that's why I said you need the mindset of a data scientist. In, in, in data science and machine learning, this is, this is pretty common in the sense that you, you train a machine learning algorithm, you put data into it, but you never really know what you're going to get in the beginning. You never really know how good the model is going to be. And for example, when you're building a, a classification algorithm, as, as data scientists and machine learning engineers, we are aware of the fact that answers can be wrong. A model is never 100% correct. And the, the same is true for these large language models and, and, and Gen AI apps in general. Like they're still behind the scenes, they're machine learning models. They're trained machine learning models. And we inference them in the same way that we do with, with classical machine learning models. Means we have a bunch of, we have some data and we send it to the model and we get an output. So I think that really highlights this, this, this difference. So you need these software engineering skills to build these applications together. But then once it's in place, you really need the, the like the experimental and, and debugging mindset of a data scientist. So as you start to uh, experiment with these applications, you're, you're going to run into problems where, for example, the, the model is not is just providing like wrong answers, either through hallucination or retrieving the wrong information from the factor database. And then it's up to you as the new age machine learning engineer to figure out how to counter this. So that could either be through changing the structure of your factor database, adding more metadata, adding more checks in place, maybe even adding an intermediate step where you let a large language model evaluate an answer before sending it back to the user. There are a lot of things that you can do and you have to be really creative with this. Really, like the sky's the limit here. These, these applications are so powerful, but you have to instruct them and direct them in such a way that you, first of all, set the boundaries so they don't go overboard and start to hallucinate. But also then within the boundaries, you have to perform various checks to really make sure that the final result, the output that you are providing to, to the user is, is correct. And now, of course, this becomes more and more and more important as you, for example, start to... So maybe what, you, what usually what companies do is they start internally. Like I said, what does this mean? You create applications to assist companies internally. And then the impact of an answer not being correct is very low because it's all internal, internal and you can put like fact checks in place where you link to reference, for example, and then you can always have the, the employee do their own due diligence to really check and make sure that the answer is correct. So it's, it's a helping tool, um, it can assist, but in the end, it's still the human that's responsible for the output, if, if you get what I'm saying. 
When you switch this to customer facing applications, so for example, you create a customer support bot and you let your customers on your website or in your app or whatever, directly interact with uh, this AI bot, with this large language model or this, this application. You really wanna be sure that if the, the customer, for example, asks like, hey, what's the return policy on this product that I just bought? You really wanna make sure that that answer is correct because otherwise it could really have legal implication at some point depending on kind of like the information that you're using you could see how as companies start to rely on this new technology that you really have to be aware of the impact that faulty and, and wrong answers could have on your customer experience so with those two topics explained to kind of like recap what what i really see as this new age machine learning engineer I feel like machine learning engineers now have an additional set of models in their toolkit. So still all of the other machine learning models are still relevant for specific use cases, but we now also have the large language models. And there are a subset of machine learning models that machine learning engineers can use depending on the use case. They're definitely not a one size fits all, but for certain use cases, they can be highly effective. So it's a new toolkit. And with that new toolkit uh, comes its own new rules and strategies and skills and overall things that you have to keep in mind. And that is just really understanding well how these large language models work, how we can set the boundaries, how we can use processes and tools like, like retrieval augmented generation to add context how to really turn those very powerful tools into applications that you can use. And then we have the, the whole MLOps part. It's still the same for these Gen AI applications and, and platforms like Langsmith um, are already putting great work into setting an example of how you can actually put evaluation and, and monitoring systems in place for Gen AI uh, applications. And also ML Flow, uh, I know that they're also experimenting with this, adding new features to, to the toolkit. So you see these, these, these platforms arise and existing platforms building out new features to, to work with all of this. So I think that's what you have to keep in mind. It's not a new role, it's just a new set of tools that you can equip yourself with if that's something you're interested in. So it's also, I think, not for, for everyone. You could very well keep focusing on more classical machine learning algorithms and just just work with that with that out of the way i also want to highlight like kind of like the the project teams that i put together and then also like the skills uh required for all of the members basically to really deliver these projects like end to end and they're not much different i i would say from uh from more traditional machine learning approaches whether i feel like right now really a lot of the value you create a lot of the value in the ui why is that because these ai applications right now are very much like customer facing whereas traditional machine learning applications could very well just like end up in a dashboard that just some people look at or end up in some automations somewhere behind the scenes in the back end but right now the main application is, is really in the front end usually in some kind of like a chat application you definitely can also implement them into a back end but that's a little more challenging and, and just not as common right now so to execute on on most of the projects that we've been working on you really need like what we call like the back end ai engineer and this is also what the like the new, the new age machine learning engineer would fall under so you could either do this uh with, with like two people so you have a dedicated software engineer and a machine learning engineer or data scientist pairing up together to really create create the back end or usually what we do is i would personally like take on that role and i would be responsible for configuring not only all the, the data connections and, and putting the data into vector databases, but also really setting up the logic, usually with, with Langchain, to, to put everything together and create a solid application. And then on the other hand, we have the front end where everything would come together to, to the user. And this is where I would really pair up with a front end developer that knows, for example, JavaScript, TypeScript or, or React to build out the front end of the applications and put it into a chat interface that, that people can actually use. So that's, those are 
like I would say three of the like the main roles that that you need to to complete these projects. And depending on how much a certain person knows, you can either do it uh, all by yourself or split it up into a project team of, or, of two or three. Again, depending on on your needs and the people that you have available. So overall, you really need a solid understanding, uh, I believe, of, of like Python, while you could also technically uh, do all of this with, with JavaScript and, and build ap applications in, in, whole, in the front end, which is something that's gaining popularity right now. But like I said, I'm still very much more confident with, uh, with Python. And also really, I feel like if you want to build out custom logic, Python is just more, more suitable for that. So that's still my, has, still has my preference for, for the backend. But yeah, that said, you know, you need to know how to work with APIs and how to piece everything together. You have to understand factor databases, the factorization process, embedding models, and also again, how to piece all of that together. And just understanding how to process data in general is really helpful because clients of, often have a bunch of data. Some could be structured, some could be unstructured, and knowing how to work with both and, and put it into a format to make it available to these, these uh, large language models is really required to, to be successful. And then also, like I've said, uh, you have to understand how to build front-end applications most of the time and then also building uh, web applications so building backends that you can put on a server uh, for the front end to then communicate with to make the results available to do the processing and then some final notes on how i see gen ai fit into the overall digitization strategy of companies right now compared to all of the other tools and techniques that are available and for that I would like to refer to an article that actually someone in my free group Data Alchemy shared. So I think this was a very interesting uh, article that was shared by Min. And this is an article from McKinsey on what's the future of generative AI, an early view in 15 charts. And without going into all of the details of the article, what I uh, what mainly like stood out to me, and I'll, I'll read this out, is Gen AI is a big step forward, but traditional advanced analytics and machine learning continue to account for the lion's share of tasks, optimization, and they continue to find new applications in a wide variety of sectors. Organizations undergoing digital and AI transformations would do well to keep an eye on Gen AI, but do not to the exclusion of other AI tools. Just because they're not making headlines doesn't mean they can't be put to work to deliver increased productivity and ultimately value. And I think this really summarizes the state of, of generative AI really well right now. Generative AI is hot, it's trending, it's new. It gets all of the headlines, but we don't have to forget that other AI tools, more traditional data science, machine learning, and even data analysis approaches are still also like very new to most companies. Most companies haven't done anything at all with that. So please keep that in mind also as you embark on this journey or as you are already a, a data scientist or machine learning engineer, with this rise of Gen AI, it doesn't make the, the, the old school or traditional skills set obsolete. There's still so much to be done in, in both areas. And I feel like you individually have to decide for yourself whether Gen AI is, is something you want to pursue, whether it's something you want to put in, in your skill set. And overall, I feel like it, it wouldn't hurt to at least like experiment with it because the fundamental, prin fundamental principles and, and techniques complement each other really well. Like I've said, you, you need Python, you need data processing. And in the end, it's still trying to take data, raw, uh, uh, raw data, whether that's just a user question, user input, or some kind of like numerical value from a sensor. And we're trying to turn that into information on, on uh, or actionable insights. That's really what, what data intelligence is about and also what, what my company, Data Lumina, what we aim to do. So it's not all artificial intelligence or Gen AI. No, we want to help companies to turn raw data into valuable information. That's what we do. And, and Gen AI is one of the tools that we have at our disposal. And now turning raw data into valuable information is also exactly the goal of what we're trying to do with Data Alchemy, which is my free group. and. If you want to learn more about this, then I would highly recommend checking it out. 
because in there I share what I call the Alchemy Codex, which is an essential set of tools uh, and skills and workflows that you need in order to start turning raw data into information. And it doesn't matter if you wanna be a data scientist, machine learning engineer, new age machine learning engineer, just wanna experiment with AI. These are really the tools and the techniques that you need no matter what it is that you do. It's really the fundamentals and that's why I put this together as a, a free resource. And if you're interested in that, then I would highly recommend checking it out. We're building a great community of people that are interested in data science and artificial intelligence and everything in between. So that's it for now. Make sure to like this video right now. It will really help me out and also show YouTube that you wanna see more content like this. And if you want to stay in the loop, don't miss any future videos. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button. So that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and then I'll see you in the next one.